tell you, this has been the roughest thing I've ever gone through my entire life. It's okay. He had like a 50-50 shot at making it. To have to explain to the kids that there's a very good possibility that, um, that their dad's not gonna come home <laughs> is one of the absolutely <clears throat> hardest things that I've ever had to do. My boys, they looked at me and my oldest, Cole, he looked at me and he goes, Mom, I, I think we need to pray. <laughs> and I was like, I think that is a fantastic idea. Matthew's case manager in um, St. Louis, she said that Northwestern um, was very interested in Matthew for a lung transplant. And she said, Matthew would need a, like a double lung transplant. When I got up here, I worked with a realtor to see if we could find an apartment, a house, anything. And, you know, not knowing what kind of income we were gonna have or anything like that, people were very reluctant to rent. So I reached out to our friend, uh, Jennifer, and she's got the connections up here. Um, I was like, Jen, I need help. I was connected through the fa to the family through the MEND organization, which is a uh, grief support system for parents who've lost babies. Uh, their best friend is a MEND leader. She reached out to our core team and said, we need prayers. A few months later, she said, they're being uh, flown to uh, Chicago. So can our Chicago leaders, Can is there anything you can do to help the family? They don't even know where to go. The McMillans were pretty much resigned. They'd be living in a hotel for the rest of the year. As I look at how the, the house here at uh, Trinity became available for the McMillan fan, it's amazing how God draws all the pieces together. It was by virtue of connecting Lutheran Church charities that Diana Bonfield got involved and just more t people talking about the same story until God absolutely opened the door to uh, this congregation uh, who had an empty parsonage and it wasn't being used. So Diana called me really out of the blue and asked whether we would consider renting our house uh, for, this, uh, for this family uh, to live in for, for some months. And I said, you know, that really isn't possible. And then it occurred to me that, that the church Jackie and I attend, which is Trinity Galewood, had a next door house, the former parsonage that uh, was empty. Mark tells me the full story and, uh, of this family looking for a place to live and ends up connecting me to Diana at Lutheran Church Charities. And as she's talking to me, I'm thinking, this is a beautiful dream. There's no way this is coming true but I'll show you the house anyways. And when Diana and John came to meet me in this house, I was ready for that meeting to be 10 minutes long and for them to say, oh, thank you so much for your kindness, we'll keep looking. And instead they go, this place looks great, can they move in? This is, it's an amazing house. I mean, absolutely floored. And um, they're like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll clean it up and we'll paint. I'm like, you don't have to do anything. I mean, anybody else would have walked through this and, and be given the timeline of two weeks to get this family into this house. You probably would have, you know, said, well, there's got to be a better option. One of the beautiful things about following Jesus is that he's constantly asking us into the impossible. Leave what you know and come with me. And here we have a family who is leaving what they know and pursuing something where they don't know what the answers are. And they're joining us, a church, who did not know that this could be possible and joining with us in something that now is possible. What it does for me is really like, have the first church in Antioch, when Christians come together, when people sold possessions and gave it not on faith alone. So to know that a group of brothers and sisters have come together to do the very thing that was commanded is very enriching. So to see Christians behaving as Christians should behave, it's very uplifting, it's very encouraging. It brings back that hope, not the hope that we hope they will, but hope in what we have, you know? really 
If you think about it, what are you going to take with you? Other than the joy, the joy of spreading God's word and doing works for the Lord. Those works definitely bring glory and honor to God. I have seen God at work in this place with each volunteer who shows up and does work. Each volunteer has put work into this place that this family will feel the love having never met them. And this is the love that God has called us to, to love one another. As a donor to LCC, it is amazing what you are contributing. I mean, look around this house. It looks like a home. It looks like a place you could live. That is not happening without you. You are offering and participating in the story of other people who are in crisis, and yet you offer stability. Every time there's an issue that touches my heart, there is a disclaimer that says, 100% of the proceeds will go to the need. And the end result is projects just like this one. This family has a home that was much needed in a time of trial, and hopefully they have a, uh, can have a, a breath of relief and just now attend to the medical needs that are necessary. That's what Lutheran Church Charities does. They reach out with the love of Jesus to others in need.